mentioned nearly failing. I mean, one of the things that I wonder about as I compare America to Europe is, you know, America, there's a sort of almost a celebration of failure. You know, you're not really mm. a proper entrepreneur until you've had one or two uh, startups that have gone belly up. In Europe, there's a real, or there traditionally has been a tremendous risk aversion, and you know, you just don't want to go bankrupt. It's the greatest disgrace that it could be. Yeah. I mean, is that changing? Well, the, legally, it's a big problem in Europe. Let's clarify that. I mean, what they, it, some countries, not all countries, do not have the American concept of bankruptcy of Chapter 11 and Chapter 7, the way it works in America. And that's another thing that really should change through, throughout Europe because in Europe there's a concept that failure is uh, somebody's at fault. Interestingly, in America, where anybody's at fault, even for selling you a hot coffee in a McDonald's and get sued, and, and even in the litigious America, the concept of failure without fall is very accepted. And in Europe, we don't take any of those frivolous lawsuits, but at the same time, we consider that there has to be fault in failure. And that, that is a big mistake. So it is true that a lot of people don't try to become entrepreneur because the stigma of failure and also the inability to declare personal bankruptcy. I have a friend, for example, who started a business in Spain and he now has a huge debt with the uh, tax authorities of, of Spain because he, at the end of the startup he failed to pay the social charges while he was trying to save his startup and now if he does another startup he the money he first makes in the other startup goes to pay the money he owes for the last startup instead in America a failure is a failure and when you start you don't owe the money of the previous startup and that is super important because you know people are going to be very afraid of losing their personal assets on a startup. Now, are you seeing signs of, of the officialdom in I Europe actually some, starting to recognize look, that? Look, I see some signs, but there's still a lot, a, a lot uh, to do. I see a lot of inconsistencies. I'll give you one very interesting one that I wrote about recently in the Huffington Post about the UK. The UK has a system that is extremely advantageous for entrepreneurs from all over the world to move to the UK that is called the non dom tax rest system in which if you are an Italian entrepreneur or a Brazilian entrepreneur or any kind of entrepreneur that's not British and you move to the UK, you only pay taxes on the, on the uh, expenses or money you bring to the UK, the earnings you have in the UK, but you don't pay anywhere else in the world. So you stop paying abroad and you have a great life in the UK. I don't know if that's fair, but that's what, it, well, that's what they have. Now, the paradox is that if on top of that you want to move your business to the UK, then you lose all your privileges. So then the UK gets the people, but not the business, right? Like if I wanted to move fun from Spain to the UK, if I move, I get all the privileges. If I move fun, I lose them all. Hmm. So I went to 10 Downing and basically said, look, either you get rid of this other law and you are more like America that gives you no privileges if you move, but if you're, what do you prefer, one person or their whole business? And there's many inconsistencies like that. And do they look like they might respond to you? Well, the they, uh, they certainly listened to what I had to say. Um, I can't give any forecast or anything of what they may do, but I, that, and there's many inconsistencies like that. But the Cameron administration has been addressing some of these, but many of these are not about reducing taxes and so on. It's about being consistent. Now, you live in Spain, which probably of all the economies in the developed world has the worst youth unemployment problem. I mean, you know, was it 45% of mm. under 25 year olds out of work? I mean, what as an entrepreneur do you, do you think needs to happen to turn that around? Well, at Fund, we certainly do our share and we give employment to a lot of young people or people under 30, but that's not enough and that's just a few. Um, and my other companies that I built in Spain, maybe we've employed, but I don't know, a thousand people. So this is a problem of millions, it's not a problem of a thousand. So when I think about this, I say, well, how could I go from my microcosm of the companies that I built to a general situation that gives employment to young people? So part of the problems of giving employment to young people is these laws that make it so expensive to let go of older people because of the accumulated sentence.